Welcome to drawing the muscles of the human figure. This is a companion lesson to our basic lesson in how to draw the human figure. So if you have not done that one yet and you're not that familiar with how to draw a realistic human figure, then you should go for the human figure first and then come back to this lesson. Now, when you're drawing a human figure, there are times when you might want to emphasize the muscles of the figure. You might want to make them very apparent. When that happens, you need to have a fair idea of how the muscles of the human figure would appear. Now this lesson is not a lesson that will get into a lot of stuff about how the muscles actually function um, or even really the names of the muscles. You don't really need to know the names of them in order to draw them. This lesson is just going to try to concentrate in a very, very basic sense of how you can draw the muscles so that they look like those on a realistic person. Now, to do that, we're going to start with an armature. When we were drawing a human figure, the first thing we did was draw that person in terms of simple shapes, like an oval for the head, Rectangle for the neck. Um, a basically kind of an oval for the torso. Trapezoid for our square or rectangle for the hips. Then an oval or rectangle for the upper arm. And an oval or rectangle for the lower arm. And then we had the hand on there. We're not going to be too concerned with the hand today, so I'll leave that alone. You should get a human figure up to that stage of the armature before we go on, because what we want to do is create the armature, and then we'll put the muscles on top of it, the same as you would create the uh, armature and put the clothes on top of it, if that was what you were going to do. So get yourself an armature to that point. Now let's try to divide this body into areas where the muscles would be. You cannot just draw random bulges and call them muscles. They won't look like muscles at all. They'll look like random bulges, like the person uh, has some horrific disease that causes great boils all over his body. We don't want that to happen. We want these muscles to make sense for people. So let's start with the torso area. You're going to have the pectoral muscles, which would be the muscles of the chest, and the abdominal muscles, which would be the muscles of the stomach. Uh, rather than learn how to draw these muscles as muscles themselves, we're going to use our uh, tried and true method of dividing the human figure into simple shapes and then work with those shapes afterwards. So first thing we're going to do is divide this entire torso area into various rectangles and maybe a few triangles in order to uh, depict where the muscles are going to be. So first thing we want to do, divide that chest right down the middle. Our bodies are symmetrical. That means they're the same on one side as they are on the other. So that center line is going to become very important. Next, let's block out the area where our pectoral, our chest muscles are going to be. The way we do that is we create a couple rectangles. Without actually actually drawing a rectangle right there or right there, we're going to go to the end of the neck or the end of the shoulder. And we're going to draw a line going across to the end of the other shoulder. That'll block out where the top of our chest muscles are. Then we'll come about halfway down the torso and draw another line going across. That'll block out where the bottom of our uh, pectorals are. So we have one set of pectoral muscles here and also right there. Now that isn't really what the muscles look like. That's just the blocked out shape for them. Now we want to draw the abdominal muscles. The way we'll do that is on either side of the center line, we'll divide this section in half vertically and also this section in half vertically. So we blocked out the general area where the abdominal muscles will be. Next, 
we want to divide these two interior sections into three horizontal areas. So now we have each set of abdominal muscles blocked out. We're not quite done. We also need the muscles on the sides out here. Down here near the waist, it'd be called the obliques. And then we have the area of the ribs. So to depict that, let's make a diagonal line going down across this area, like that, and like this on the other side. This upper part will be the area for the ribs. The lower part will be the area for the uh, obliques. Basically the muscles of your waist. So we've got all the areas for the muscles blocked out. Now all we have to do is put the muscles on there. Now this is a little bit of a matter of what your touch is going to be on this picture. You need to determine who it is you're drawing before you draw them. See some guys, um, bodybuilders, athletes, or whatever may have very, very distinct, very defined muscles. Well, most of us don't. See what I did with the uh, pectoral muscles was I just sort of rounded the edges of those rectangles. And that gives me the two uh, sets of pectoral muscles. Um, I do the same thing for all of these muscles right here at the ribs. I'm gonna round this out. The uh, Obliques, I'm going to round them out right there at the waist. What I'm doing is basically just getting rid of the somewhat robotic, hard edge, straight line shape of each of those uh, shapes that I created because there's no straight lines on the human body. Then in the abdominal muscles, same thing. I'm going to round out. all of these sections of the abdominals just by rounding the corners. Now you notice the muscles on this guy's chest are very, very defined. Most of us, our muscles are not uh, that defined. So you might want to take it easy on some of those lines. You might want to actually take some of them out, at least partially, in order to make this more normally built person. And that would be true all over of all these muscles. The softer you want the person to appear, so that they can appear to be more of your average everyday person, the more of the lines you're going to want to take out. The harder you want the person to appear, the more of those lines you're going to want to leave in. You could get to the point where you've taken out almost all the lines. Depends basically on, you know, how hard this person works out in the gym or how many ho-hos this person likes to eat while they're sitting on the couch all day long. So there, just by dividing that torso into rectangular sections and then rounding off the edge of those rectangles we create, we put together the muscles of the torso. Now, the muscles of the arm require more of a lined approach than a uh, shape approach. And those would be lines that represent the specific muscles of the arm. So let's start up here at the top of the shoulder. You're going to have a muscle called the deltoid, which comes off the shoulder and into the upper arm. It's just a curve like that. Then on the front part of the arm, from the deltoid to the elbow, you have another curve called the biceps. Then on the back part of the arm, from the armpit down to the elbow, you have a curve with your triceps. 
Those are basically the muscles for the upper arm. For the lower arm, the lower arm muscle group, we're going to start at the elbow and at that point we need to make this arm thicker because the muscles are thicker up there by the elbow. And then we'll make that arm get thinner down by the wrist because that's where the muscles thin out. And that'll about cover you for the muscles for the arm. Now as with the torso, you can define those muscles of the arm more or less. These are fairly undefined muscles. We just have the curves of them on the arm and those curves can be even smaller and less noticeable, although they probably should be there even if they're very slight. Um, there are, are no people that have a couple of rectangles for their arms. We do want to show the shape of the muscles. But you can also define these muscles even more just by continuing some of the lines that you use to create them. Now, this requires more of a knowledge of exactly how the muscles are shaped and what they do, but you know, not a terribly great amount at this stage. Even at this stage, it can be a beginner sort of thing. Those can be some fairly well-defined muscles. You notice I just really translated them into ovals. so that you can see them more. And that's about it for the muscles of the arm and the torso. You can see here on this picture that the muscles on this male figure are much more defined and harder than the muscles on this female figure. You don't really see much definition of her muscles, but you do see the shape of them. Now what we're going to do is do the muscles in the legs. Uh, they're about the same in a lot of ways as the muscles in the arms, but they're also, from our point of view as the artist, much more simple at a beginning level. So in order to get that going, we're going to need an armature of the human figure from the waist down. So there's a trapezoid for the hips. Here's a rectangle for the upper leg. There's a rectangle for the lower leg. And then there's the feet. All right, so there we are. Now, we're thinking we want to put some muscles on the legs. This person's wearing shorts, swim trunks, whatever, so that we can actually see uh, the shapes of the muscles on our legs. Well, from our beginner's point, we can do a fairly decent job of making realistic legs without going through some really detailed ideas of how the muscles are formed. So we can start right here, where an upper and lower leg come together. That's the knee. Now, if you can see the person's bare leg, you're probably going to see their knee. So you might draw a few shapes there to represent that knee. You know, what I've really done is I've just basically drawn a U shape. And, you know, you don't have to be very graphic with the knee. But uh, do show that it's there. Now, when we're talking about the muscles in the legs, we're talking really about where does the leg get thicker, or where does the leg get thinner. When you're looking at the leg, the muscles in the upper leg are much heavier than the muscles in the lower leg. So from the knee up, that leg is going to get thicker. So you're gonna make the shape that you started with for the leg become thicker. And then when it gets up to about the hips, it's gonna to start to thin out again so it matches into where the hips are. So the leg is gonna get thicker as it goes up from where the knee is. And 
and then thin out again when it gets up to where the hips are. From the knee down, the opposite happens. Uh, it would start the knee, and the leg is going to be thicker up there at the calves. These are the calf muscles. And then the leg will get thinner as it descends down to where the ankle is. So at the knee, the leg will be thicker. And at the ankle, it'll be thinner. And you can pretty much get away with just that for the legs, although you could also emphasize the muscles on the legs more. These calf muscles. And the muscles in the legs. But once again, that does require some amount of knowledge of exactly how the muscles work and what the very particular muscles in those uh, parts of the body are. Now, of course, when you're done, make sure you erase the armature that's beneath all that, or it'll just gum up the works and confuse what's going on. That's pretty much it for the muscles of the legs, all that.